Connecting to Google Sheets from Power BI is the 13th most voted for idea currently on ideas.powerbi.com. People really, really want this. It is just such a convenient way to connect to data and analyze it. And actually, what I'm going to show you eventually is that connecting to Google Sheets is in many ways better than connecting to Excel. It is by far the easiest way to have data that you just type in through a spreadsheet, through any computer or mobile device, and have that automatically be published in Power BI. So let's get started. So my name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Google Sheets, Power BI, Excel, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. So here is the URL. I, all I need to do is copy this, and then if I go into Power BI, I go to Get Data, and I choose More, and then I'm just going to search for Google Sheets, press Connect. And it just asks you to paste it. Super, super easy. With a lot of the OneDrive and SharePoint options, you have to manipulate what you're pasting. Here, you don't even have to know how the HTML code works. You just paste it all and it works. If you point here, it tells you, well, learn more at this place. Another thing that connecting to OneDrive is missing, it's, it's hard to learn more about exactly what you need to do from an official Microsoft source. Press OK. Asks you to authenticate. Now I can go back. I can press Connect. I have the two files, same as in my core workbook. So I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to choose, I'll take both of them actually, and I'm going to go to transform data. That is the better way to do it. You can load it directly, but here, as you can see, I've got loads of blanks up here, which is not ideal. Now it does give you blanks like this sometimes and not null values like Excel often gives you, but it doesn't really matter too much. You can just filter and remove empty anyway. And then I can use other transformation steps, use headers as first row, and then select these ones and remove other columns should I want to just keep those. Now, if I go to the first source step, I can see that it starts like this. And if I go to the other one, the data tab, I can see the source step starts like this as well. So it's probably better to have a parameter that leads to both of them. That way you can just have one link rather than two links that go to it. So I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. The other thing I wanted to go through in navigation here is, well, the images haven't really worked. Power Query does not support it. So image is a type of thing you can have in Google Sheets, but not in Excel at the time of making this video anyway, um, which is I can have an image actually in a cell. It uses an image function, which takes it from a URL. So this is the image as part of the URL, but that's not a big deal because Power BI can also convert a URL to an image, which Excel cannot at the moment. So that's no issue. I'm going to delete this column, click on it, delete. Uh, same trick as I did before. I'm going to remove empty, use first row as headers. And then here, I don't like the spaces before. So let's go to transform format and trim. By the way, if you've never used Power Query, you are missing out. I love, love, love this. Um, select all the columns, control A, detect data type to get the dates like that. I don't need these ones, so I'm going to delete them. And this one, I'm also going to set this manually just to be a whole number. So if I go to the view tab, I like this query dependencies view. It shows me that I have one source that links to two of them. But as I showed you before, the issue is that it repeats the file location, which if you need to change the file URL or location doesn't get convenient because you have to change it in multiple places. Having said that, Google is very good at keeping its location the same even when you move it between folders, which is fantastic. But in any case, for good practice, let's use a parameter. So I'm going to go to Manage Parameters and click on New. I'm going to say here it is file location. And then in current value, I'm just going to paste that URL like that. And then it puts it here. And then if I go to the first step of each one, instead of everything between the speech marks, I just type in file location, press tab, and that will lock it in. This way it remains dynamic in case people want to change it. They can do so without going into Power Query. The other final thing I want to point out is the function is called equals Google Sheets contents. So this is the brand new function that is able to decipher Google Sheets data. It's not the 
X the same as Excel, but the data that you see and the data that you move around with becomes pretty much the same as Excel. You have you have a couple of different things. So this sheet arrange ID is leaf. These aren't things you see in Excel, but they are things that you see in the Google Sheets connector. So yeah, great. So once you're done, you can press close and apply, and then it will load it up. I have already pre-built some visuals for you here. Um, and if you want to change the parameter, you can click here and just edit parameters. You don't have to go back into transform data just to change the file location, which becomes pretty convenient. Uh, so I have created a couple of measures here and some visuals. You do need to create table relationships. Otherwise, you get repeated numbers like that. So a couple of ways you can do that. If you go to the model view, you can just draw a line between city and city like that. And this becomes a one-to-many relationship. So what about the image that we had before? So if I go to link and I want to get the total sales by link, at the moment it's showing me like that, but if I click on link and go to column tools, I can click on this and in uncategorize, I can say that this is actually an image URL and then these should give you images, very nice. So you can have these kind of bar charts inside the cell I have a whole other video to do that, but essentially, if you do that with data bars and then show bar only, you can end up with a bar chart inside the cell that shows you as if it's an image chart, which is pretty nice. But, uh, you can also change the height of the image if you wanna go further and remove the totals to make it look completely like a chart like this. I have another video covering that. So that's essentially how you can make it work. Now, if you do want to publish it, then I can choose which workspace that I want to do it in. You must be signed in in order to do this. I'm just gonna go with my workspace. And then you should get this, so you can open it up. And we can actually set it up for automatic refresh, which is really great. So here I am in Power BI Online. I'm going to click on my name there and then navigate to the data set. So here I am, this means it's new. So here I can schedule a refresh and I can do certain things like this. It does ask me to authenticate again, so I need to edit credentials, uh, press privacy. Usually I put none for these. Privacy are kind of obscure things that you don't need to worry about if you're just connecting to one data set. It's not as scary as it sounds. And there you go, Google Sheets data source updated and I can Go to schedule refresh and I can say on daily and I can add a time and then apply. There you go. And just to test it, I can go navigate to it. I can click here to just refresh now and I can see this is happening. You can see that the time has changed. So that has worked. So it does actually refresh, which I will emphasize you can't do that particularly easily with a free OneDrive account. So the fact that you can do this with a free Google Sheets account and a free Power BI account means that you can get everything to just nest together really, really, really nicely. Here is the Google Sheets connector information. So I'll put a link to this in the comment. So it has prerequisites. It tells you what to do and how it needs to look and how to authenticate. Essentially what I've just shown you, but this is important limitations and considerations. It's not available yet in Power Query Online for data flows. It doesn't work with a folder or a shared drive on Google Drive. It only works with a single file. So the experience you have with Excel that you can combine multiple Excel files in a folder, unfortunately doesn't work for now. But the nice thing about Google Sheets is that you can rename a file and it's still, or even move a file, it still won't break the connection because that's not embedded in the URL. Um, you do need a different resource path for every Google Sheets URL. So it does ask you to authenticate quite a few times. There's no way to browse for the file either for now. But in fairness, the SharePoint connector and the OneDrive built-in connector through connecting via the web don't seem to have those things as well. And finally, it's worth mentioning that this works in Power BI desktop, but not in Excel desktops Power Query, unfortunately for now. Maybe it will in the future, which would be nice. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name is David Benheim and I have loads of videos on my channel about different things that are new in tech or existing in tech 
in Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want more information.